All right, everyone, this is Josh. We're at the uh, end of, of day one in Davos. It's been an incredible day. My feet are very tired, but we're still going. I am here with Marie Kazan in a very special location aesthetically, but this is also the first year for a psychedelic house at Davos. And uh, I kind of wanted to ask you about the Genesis story. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and how this all came to be. Yeah. So yes, it is the first year of a medical psychedelics house of Davos, um, and we're super proud to be able to bring this, uh, bring this to this community. Um, so I started working in the psychedelic space around four years ago, um, and started a uh, accelerator, incubator accelerator called Tabula Ross Adventures, um, and we've been connecting investors with entrepreneurs for many years of time. We built the world's largest psychedelics conference called Psyched, uh, and that kind of you know opened up the door for us to be able to come to Davos and bring policymakers, indigenous community members investors, entrepreneurs, policymakers, regulators, uh, researchers, basically everyone that is contributing to the future of the psychedelics ecosystem and psychedelic assisted therapy that roll out specifically. That's really amazing. And for our listeners at home who want to create a house in, in Davos for their important cause, how does something like this come to be? How much planning has gone into it? How much um, it's a lot of work and a lot of logistics. Yeah, don't, don't do it. For the listeners at home, don't do it. It's, uh, it is, yeah, it is, we, we had to stop full-time operations of uh, multiple projects to be able to execute on this. It's been about a year of trying to execute on it. I mean, like the, you're basically doing a full conference in a country where you don't speak the language, where hot dogs cost a hundred bucks because everyone's a billionaire. Um, it's just like an absolutely ludicrous place to really organize something logistically. Plus you have to fly speakers out, cover lodging and logistics of all of that as well. So, you know, it's a very difficult uh, taxing endeavor. We're super happy to be able to deliver it to the Davos crowd and community. Um, but yeah, going forward, we'll see how it continues to uh, evolve and how our presence in, in Davos will change over the coming years. Still being able to provide some of the, these foundations, but also maybe um, taking a bit of a step back and not going as uh, intensely next year. But we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, man, you're, you're bringing back uh, post-traumatic stress from uh, planning NFTLA, which we just did, which was about 3,600 people, 270 speakers, hundreds of sponsors and media. It, it was a lot. Yeah. It was a lot. But um, actually, I had to take a vacation uh, the week prior to Davos to finally recover from right. FTLA. And I'm sure after you have a vacation, you'll you'll have a different perspective right. on, exactly. on all of this. But but why this year? Why now? Um, what what's different that sort of compelled you to do this? Yeah. So this year um, is different because, uh, well, yeah, the necessity for this this year. I think that psychedelics have made the news in every measurable way. They've been headlining the New York Times multiple times in 2021. You know, Davos, it's not like we are, you know, hitting them, uh, you know, out of left field. I think Davos expected that at some point they would see a psychedelics house. And this was really, you know, the best year to be able to do it. We have the research, we have, you know, the, the capital that's flowing into the sector. Um, we have a lot of the pieces in place to be able to actually bring psychedelics in a very, you know, um, high quality way to the Davos crowd and really highlight the tremendous the strides that have been made in psychedelic research and psychedelic assisted therapy. And, and is the sort of growing crisis around mental health, is that also an impetus? Yeah, of course. I mean, COVID, I think, threw so many individuals off and um, yeah, has, you know, we've, we've kind of come to this reckoning of mental health is a humongous issue. It's a humongous issue worldwide. There's no one who's not, you know, uh, left affected no matter where they are from geographically. And so it's something that we have to, you know, really approach today. Um, there's a quote that a friend mentioned. It's like, you can't, you know, microdose yourself out of violence or out of poverty. Um, so there's only so much that psychedelics can really do to, to heal certain systems, but we believe that they are the best tool that we have by the research, by the numbers to be able to heal things like, PTSD, depression, anxiety, or at least reduce those ailments uh, so substantially that people no longer meet the threshold for diagnosis. Right on, and I know there's a lot of different components to your programming, but we are sort of the edge of NFT podcast, and we're excited that you've invited us to tomorrow, which is really focused on, on NFTs. How does Web3 and NFTs fit into sort of this landscape in your mind, and what's the potential that's unlocked there? 
So I think it's a pretty large gradient. Um, there's a lot of really interesting Web3 projects. I mean, I think Web3 and NFTs are going to, in many ways, affect like every part of you know society and, and how we function. So will psychedelics in many ways. Um, so there's a whole wide range of ways that uh, Web3 and NFT specifically are being currently used um, in this landscape. One of them is um, there's a really incredible project called Can A Life, which is helping indigenous communities be able to create cultural assets from the artwork that they're creating and and making them into NFTs in uh, the Peruvian Amazon. Um, and so these communities are actually able to financially support themselves by creating an entire kind of IP portfolio of cultural property um, with the artwork that they've been generating. So that's kind of like one side of things. We've also seen um, you know, really interesting applications of decentralizing um, drug development or health systems. Um, so VitaDAO, SciDAO, um, Molecule.to, those are all kind of projects working at this intersection of psychedelics or therapeutics health systems and web3 um, so there's a lot of different kind of uh, pieces there that are super interesting to just see the intersection of uh, to the point where now the crypto psychedelic movement is something that's very real and has many followers and that's really the focus of the of the night tomorrow is you know how do these fields intersect and how do folks from the crypto space especially or the web3 space support the future of psychedelic therapeutics that's amazing and those sound like really cool projects I'd like to get the info on so we can share with our, our listeners but I, I guess the fundamental question, maybe this is like one of those chicken and egg questions, but, but does Web3 catalyze innovation for your mind in terms of medical um, psychedelics or does it, does, it, does it more amplify the existing community and programs that are already existing? Um, I think, you know, depending on what projects you're looking at, it can do uh, it can do both. Some just amplify what's already there. Some kind of really help incubate innovation in the space um, and make certain things that weren't before possible possible. So, you know, Molecule, VitaDAO, um, SciDAO, I think are doing things with Web3 that just haven't been possible in our current health systems. And so, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's an innovation in technology. So there's a whole new world that's there to explore. Um, but I also think that even just kind of plugging in the base components, you can see some amplification of the current things that are happening and you know just assistance um, to be able to roll them out faster or to um, yeah just see them come to fruition cool well what's what's in store tomorrow what do we have to look forward to specifically yeah so we'll be discussing some of these projects um, we'll have multiple folks talking about kind of this intersection of um, crypto or web3 and health or psychedelics um, another thing that we're really excited about is we'll be launching a uh, nft collection um, or at least you know revealing kind of what we're working on and what we have been working on um, i published the first nft of consciousness back in may of last year which is basically me collecting eeg data since then i've collected hundreds of scans and created just a small mock-up site um, called Crypto Qualia. Qualia are states of consciousness. Um, and so basically what I'm trying to demonstrate with this concept is that we can actually create um, NFTs, tradable assets out of our states of consciousness that then using neurofeedback technology, which is already widely available, we can actually replicate each other's brain states. So if you've ever wanted to meditate like the Dalai Lama, you can capture that brain state from the Dalai Lama with just very simple EEG technology. You can create an NFT out of that. You can sell that trade that, open source that, and someone can actually go put that on a screen, hook themselves up to an EEG, project their own brain waves over the Dalai Lamas, and self-modulate to be able to achieve that same exact brain wave state and achieve the Dalai Lama's uh, state of consciousness. So that's really what we're trying to demonstrate is this you know, cool intersection of consciousness and uh, the world of NFTs. Wow. I'm, I'm trying to take that all in. <laughs> I don't really know where to go from here, but that sounds awesome. Uh, what's the project called? Uh, crypto qualia so yeah crypto and then qualia states of consciousness so crypto qualia.com is where people can go and just sign up and we'll be issuing releases nothing is live yet we'll probably still need a couple months to really um, get everything up and running um, but the other incredible thing about this collection is that one of the utilities is being able to sit in psychedelic ceremony with one of the biggest psychedelic ogs dennis mckenna um, and so if you've ever wanted to drink ayahuasca with dennis mckenna that is a part of the utility for this specific nft um, we'll only be releasing releasing three over the next couple of weeks and then um, have a collection of around 32 that we'll be releasing over the next couple of years to be able to sit in ceremony either with Dennis or with other psychedelic pioneers um, that we're hoping to uh, really bring to the table as well and have them participate in this kind of discussion of uh, NFT izing consciousness and what can be done here um, as we open source access to um, our brain states. Wow, I'm, I'm excited to learn more tomorrow. Uh, really appreciate you spending some time with us. 
And if folks want to stay in touch with you personally, are you on Twitter? Yeah, LinkedIn? I'm trying to grow my Twitter, not the most active. All right, let, let's give this guy some Twitter love. What do we got going on there? Yeah, just Marie Kazan, M-A-R-I-K-H-A-Z-A-N. Um, yeah, feel free to follow me. And yeah, the more you like me, the more I'll put out. Um, so yeah, just uh, musings and uh, all the projects I'm working on, I'll, uh, I'll ping out there. So uh, yeah, please, uh, please follow and looking forward to keeping up with everyone else as well. All right, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it, man. 